In this problem, we finish our calculation of shear forces exerting in the boundary layer on a flat plate. And in particular, we are looking at the turbulent part of the boundary layer that has built up on this advertising board here uh, below me on this car. And we calculated before that the transition occurs at about 60 centimeters downstream of the board, which means that um, all this area here, here that I'm highlighting now, this whole area here will feature a turbulent boundary layer. And what we want to calculate is the force that is exerting on this. So this the force uh, F tau turbulent that is exerting uh, due to shear on this turbulent part of the boundary layer. The good news is that the mathematics are uh, the same. The physical principles that we apply are the same. We start with the shear coefficient um, and then we integrate the shear over the whole area. Uh, the bad news is that the math is a tiny bit more involving and the numerical part is a bit tedious to do and um, it's easy to get tripped up over your own feet uh, while doing so. So um, I'll do my best <laughs> to show you how to do it. Uh, let's get started. We have from the formula sheet uh, the friction factor coefficient CF in a turbulent power, a boundary layer is expressed like so. It is um, zero. 0 0.027 divided by the Reynolds number based on distance uh, to the power 1 over 7, like so. Um, again, this is a rule of thumb. It's a model um, for how the friction uh, develops inside the turbulent boundary layer. It's not an absolute rule of physics, and physicists and fluid dynamicists will often argue about which power to put here and which exact number to put there so that it best matches the experimental conditions. And we know again that uh, the friction factor is defined as shear uh, divided by one half. Well, this, was not, no, this was not a very straight line. Shear divided by one half of rho times the mainstream velocity squared, like so. If you combine those two, you get an expression for shear. And this expression is tau is one half of rho u squared multiplied by 0 0.227 multiplied by the Reynolds number based on distance rex to the power minus one over seven like so okay so let's try to write this a little bit further and look at what we have we get um here tau in the turbulent part um, is equal to 0 0.027 times 1 half times rho times u squared multiplied by, uh, let's group together the parts that are interesting, rho u over mu, and this will be to the power minus 1 over 7, and then from this I have omitted x. So let's put here x to the power minus 1 over 7, like so. Okay, and again we see shear decreases with distance as you um, as the boundary layer grows. And so the earlier in the on the on the inside the flow you are, and the more shear you will have due to the boundary layer. <clears throat> okay, um, let's now integrate this into a shear force F due to shear in the turbulent part uh, will be the integral, as we explained before, um, of the shear tau multiplied by the width of the board, which happens to be, in this case, the height of the board, uh, this length from top to bottom here of the board, multiplied by dx. The trick here, and now is to remember from where to where do we integrate this. We want to go from this point here uh, to the final point over there. So what we want to do is to have here x transition and then at the final point of the boundary layer we are at x max which happens to be the length of the board over there. It would be a, a rookie mistake that every fluid dynamicist has done once in their life to start this integral at zero because the boundary layer does not start turbulent, it um, starts laminar and we calculated the shear force on the laminar part before. So let's carry out the integration. We have something that looks like this. Um, let's go for that. 
let's go for x transition to x max of 0 0.027 multiplied by one half multiplied by rho um, rho will be once here and once there so rho is rho to the power one minus one over seven is six over seven uh, let me perhaps highlight this so i don't i don't forget terms as i go rho appears one time here to the power one and one time there to the power minus one seven <clears throat> u appears here to the power two and here to the power minus one over seven uh -huh. so here we are so this will be u to the power uh, 14 over 7 minus 1 over 7 uh, 13 over 7 uh, multiplied by uh, mu the viscosity to the power 1 over 7 uh, multiplied by x to the power uh, minus 1 over 7 so i have put in now all that is tau and then i have w and then i have dx okay once again uh, intimidating expression but it all uh, becomes easier once you remember that only one thing in there uh, depends on, on x and this is this term there. All the rest will get out of the integral. So let's carry this out. Um, we have zero, or put it this, like this, 0 0.027 divided by two, multiplied by rho six, seven, u 13 7 mu 1 7 like so w uh, i think this is it and then we can carry out the integral the integral of x to the power of something happens to be 1 over x sorry 1 over 1 plus 1 plus or put it this this, this way minus 1 over 7 plus 1 of x to the power minus 1 over 7 plus 1 like so and this is in between x max and x transition like so almost done almost done um, if you put in those numbers you get 1 over <clears throat> 1 over 6 seventh is 7 sixths and you multiply this by 0 0.027 and you divide this by 2, you should get something that looks like uh, 0 0.01, hmm, 0 0.0175, of course, well, why not? Uh, then you put in the value for viscosity, which is 1.225 uh, to the power 6, 7. Uh, multiply by velocity, which is 10 to the power... 13.7 viscosity is 1.5 times 10 to the power minus 5 this is to the power 1 over 7 and I multiply this then by the width the width is 1.5 and then I have x to the power 6 over 7 in between those two values so x max to the power 6 7 minus x transition to the power 6 over 7 like so um, and this happens let's perhaps put colors mm, like so this happens to be here this happens to be 3 meters and this happens to be 0 0.612 meters um, like so uh, and so if you put in all those numbers uh, you will get 0 0.79 0 0.79 what did we calculate we calculated a force f tau turbulent uh, so this is in newtons like so let me square this up again this is a very small force this is not even the weight of a pen so the friction force on the board is very low. Uh, <clears throat> before I continue, let me uh, let me insist on uh, carrying out this this calculation here. You will see that 
in pretty much all the exercises that are related to bond relayer development. Uh, we have a force due to shear that we have to calculate inside a laminar or and or a turbulent um, boundary layer. So this equation here, this integration process comes up often um, and the more often you have done it and the easier it becomes. However, the difficult part in here is not obvious. It is putting all those numbers here uh, at, the, at the bottom into your calculator in the right order and typing it all correctly. Uh, so my advice is practice. Practice with your calculator until you are very familiar with the calculation rules of your calculator. A uh, typical trap would be this here. Uh, depending on how you type this in, uh, you will want to make sure that 1.5 times 10 to the power minus 5, this is one number, and then you, you put this to the power 1 over 7. Um, so this uh, practice typing this in until you are 100% sure that what you type is really what you mean into your calculator so that you get uh, correct results in the end. Okay, um, the final thing we wanted to calculate was, was the power that is being lost by the car. Uh, because of the board as it travels uh, down there. Uh, so the power is very easy to calculate. Uh, the power due to drag um, is basically the force due to shear, uh, complete, uh, multiplied by the velocity of the car, which is u in this case. Um, and so f tau is actually uh, the f laminar plus the f turbulent that we calculated, um, but we have to multiply this by two because there are two sides to the board. Uh, we calculate only on one side and on the other side, exactly the same thing happens. And then we multiply this by uh, the velocity here. Uh, and if you put in the right numbers in there, you will get 19.9 uh, watts of power are being lost um, to friction on the board. A uh, couple of remarks here. Uh, first is 20 watts is very small okay i can produce 20 20 watts easily so there's no need to have a car with a 300 horsepower engine uh, to drag along a board um, that is that is um, exposed to air uh, like so um, you're wasting 20 watts of power uh, which is nothing um, in this case so in this case probably um, carrying the sign around with a bicycle by a phd student would be a better use of the professor's time uh, than um, just driving the board around Second, uh, we have an ideal case here. We have the ideal case of the board. Uh, let me try to draw it again. The board being um, horizontal and, and being, well, in this case, vertical for the car, above the car. But the board being perfectly aligned with the free stream velocity, uh, which is coming right here. And so what we have is a nice developing boundary layer on both sides. And let me perhaps draw it again very quickly. Laminar boundary layer transits after 60 centimeters, then becomes turbulent, and this turbulent boundary layer grows like this. It reaches, whoop, it reaches here about five or six centimeters thickness. So this is very exaggerated in the vertical scale compared to the longitudinal scale. Uh, but this is the main principle. And of course, you have the mirror version of that on the other side, like so. Like so. So this is what we modeled, and this is what we calculated in this exercise. But you have to ask yourself, what happens if the flow is not perfectly parallel to the plate? Um, and so what happens if instead of this velocity here at incoming, I have something that looks like so, for example, the velocity looks like this. On the bottom of the, of the plate, on the, on the part that is upstream uh, on the plate, uh, then I will get a case which is very similar. Perhaps the boundary layer will be a little bit crushed but it will still develop like so uh, on the bottom part. But on the top side, I have a very sharp leading edge um, and the boundary layer will almost instantly separate. And so what I will get is a, a recirculation bubble here and then a very messy zone in this, in this case here where there is no clear boundary layer before the boundary layer starts maybe uh, developing again here. This is because the main flow patterns around, around this uh, will be very strange. Um, and so the flow may go like this and then turn around like that. In this case, most of the models that we developed, the straight um, flat plate, smooth flat plate boundary layer models that we have, they all collapse. And you find out that just because you change a few degrees on the board, 
um, all your precious calculations mean nothing anymore. Um, so be very careful with how far you can carry out uh, those calculations that we did before. Um, this answer to how do we predict uh, what is happening in this drawing here uh, is you need, a, you need an experiment. You need either an experiment um, in the lab or a numerical computation. Um, so with these words of warning, um, this is how you calculate the force due to friction inside a turbulent boundary layer on the flat plate.